Okay. Welcome back to the AETV Live podcast broadcast episode number six with my guest host and the greatest guest host in the world, co-host, wow. host of the show, digital video production Ooh, producer nice. manager, my wife, Alessandra. Hey, hey baby. baby. Hey. How are you doing over there? I'm really excited. How are doing we feeling well. about crow hosting? Wonderf- wonderfully, would I say it as an adverb? I should know this. I am doing wonderfully. Very this nice. Is, this is wonderful. I'm so glad you decided to join me for episode six. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I was looking forward to doing a podcast with you. And uh, and here we are. Here we are. Is the music exactly. distracting? No, I love it. I'm just actually really immersed in this video right now. Look, oh, we've been right, here, there, Barcelona, out. Spain. Let's this watch so a little cool. bit of it. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. So these are just, uh, I guess this is 50 famous world markets in the on the earth. Um, so this is Barcelona, Spain right now. And we, go we to actually this market? went to this market. Oh, yeah. That's sick. So we went to Spain on our honeymoon and we it was did. so cool. This yeah. was in uh, There they go. They're flying in the away. Gothic quarters, but Morocco. Very cool. Yeah. And so this is showing global markets. Mm-hmm. Well, and that ties right into our uh, artisans and handmade uh vendors i just i'm so fascinated by all that Mm -hmm. i mean even when we were watching the indian one and the women were just like threading flowers with the needle it's like that takes so much skill and patience and it's incredible especially being someone who's trying to start a small business right now uh i really understand that you know just how something that seems so simple and so small is actually so detailed and takes a lot of discipline and it's right. just really cool. I mean, look at all that. They're just filling streets. And these people are just bringing their wares to the market too, though. I mean, this is their livelihood. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's so cool to see how um, it's so much more saturated in Europe and like Asia and I guess the Eastern Hemisphere, you know, um, this kind right. of way of living and doing your own business, whether it be growing vegetables or making rugs or having a bakery, um, a coffee shop, spices, seeds, clay pots, you know, it's right. like, wow, it's, uh, everybody has a unique skill that they've learned. And I think that's really special. That's so well, of cool. course here, um, here in America, the, mar- the whole market thing is like catching on, but in a trendy way, you know, yeah, our markets well, have become mm-hmm. retail. And we don't necessarily rely on the community like we might have in the past. True. Uh, but now it's like hip to do a market. But also at the same time, it's coming back in a hip way. But it's also people are really liking it, it seems like, in the markets we go to. And that there's something natural about it, it feels like, to yeah. go and support someone directly who their who their product is right there. And they can either explain to you how the product was made and where they got it or how they themselves made it, you know, and, and how it supports them and what it does for, for like it ties them right to it versus just picking up a, something you need off the shelf at Walmart. There's no connection. You don't even understand. It's all for yourself in that regard. You don't even understand what you're that. Well, it's not that you don't understand. It's that the levels aren't there. And so it's interesting. It's like markets came back because they're hip, but I feel like it's a, it's it's working still for the good, and that people are enjoying it and be like, wow, it is nice. We should support the community. Like this is great, you know, and really enjoying it. No, so. absolutely, I one hundred percent agree with you. And it's funny because when you started talking about how markets are becoming hip, I like automatically assumed. Oh yeah, and in one sense they are, and that means that you know because they're doing ethnic. Ethic, ethically sourced and paying these people what they deserve, that is way higher in price than like going to a TJ Maxx or going to a Marshalls or going to a Target. And we often look at that and we think, whoa, that's insane. It's like a bad connotation. It's not a good, not a good deal. Right, you know? right. Not Some a good deal. Not affordable, it. right? Yeah. Affordable, um, that's a better word. But it's like we should understand that. But then also I think if it became more, well, if the price – of things in general, cost of things came down and we didn't have inflammation of mm-hmm. money, you know, then inflation, 
<laughs> but I was inflammation is kind of the same thing. Right. If Swelling we didn't have of money. inflammation in our, no, we're just kidding. We didn't have sweating. inflammation oh in gosh. our body, so we'd all be a lot better that. off. If we didn't have inflation in our <laughs> economic system, you know. Yeah. It would be helpful because then people, I think, could be paid less and be more willing to give their service at a price that is, you know. But anyways, regardless. Yeah. I think it's really cool how there's different types of markets. There is the hip market where things are ethically sourced and I totally support that and people are paying the big bucks for these artists and designers and hand-woven creations. But then there are the local marmot. Um, mur, mur, mur. <laughs> local the local marmots. Mur, mur, mur. There are local Mormons. They're very kind no, people. No, marmots what is what marmots? I was saying. <laughs> what are, what, what is marmot. that? Marmot. A marmot is like yeah. a type of... Uh, it's like a ferret or something, that type of animal. Oh, like a rodent? Mm-hmm. A rodent snake? Sort of, like That's a, what I think a ferret is. Yeah, it's I think a they're a marmot, rodent. though, in the end. I think okay. a marsupial might be a marmot. I'm not sure. Got but it. you were saying local markets. It's just, local it wasn't coming out right. Like, yeah, farmer, uh, locally sourced farmers, things like that. Uh, with communities that aren't as highly marketed, you know, maybe not making still making great income can live off of it you know but just more affordable to your community and so i just it's encouraging to know that people have that really in every city um we really do it's a beautiful thing yeah. and then there's also you know um internationally from other continents of course but there's a wide range of it and you're right i think it is growing but not only hip also in the community and small towns and yeah yeah it's just really cool it's awesome well, there's like I like I was saying, there's something about a market that speaks to our maybe ancestry or something. Well, you know, I keep using Walmart because that's such a easy retail brand. I mean, it's right up there in your brain and you want to go online. It's Amazon. You want to go box store. It's Walmart um, and every other store in between that you can think of all the way back to the ones that went bankrupt. Radio Shack, Circuit City, you know, there's been. They've come and gone, and there's a, a bunch of huge ones that still exist. But we haven't lived in the time of, of trading. We haven't lived in the time of markets that we actually had to have. You know, I didn't, we didn't have to get in a wagon or go on foot with a sack or a basket, you know, to the next town over, carry our wares, whatever it was, either vegetables or meats or useful things and then that you Stomp know grapes with so our the, feet, the silk you know, road and all fish. all that you know we've always tr humans have always yeah. traded yeah. but we and we created. obviously we traded locally because we weren't as connected we couldn't fly we couldn't freight stuff in we couldn't fly it in we couldn't train it in we couldn't even ship it in for a long time of, of you know the majority of history so uh, there's something very deep about markets and the trade and the experience and like the hustle and bustle and and uh, they could they're just enjoy and again that's why i say they're hip because they're just enjoyable events to go to a nice Definitely. bustling market there's something about it the energy Fresh where you're like yeah, yeah and looking at it meeting everyone things. and seeing their wares and seeing like oh wow you made this yourself no way like how'd you do it and they'll tell you the whole Smelling story the why or, yeah. what inspired them you know the whole thing and and what Sometimes they'll even tell you, uh, not a sob story, but like you can see that there's meaning behind what they do. Maybe Definitely. someone passed or had a hard time and that's what inspired them. to. And you learn all this stuff about the, the product that, again, if you walked into a Walmart, if you walked into a Dollar General, you know, the worst offender, which is just like the Walmart reject stuff, you walk in there and it's just like. Well, this is really blowing my, sorry. No, go ahead. I mean, I, well, let me finish my point. You just walk in there and you don't have the connection with the, while you may have a need for the item. Yes, I get it. You need trash bags in today's society. You know how we operate with trash bags. We bag it. We can it. It goes on the street. They pick it up, you know, and we pay for that service. I get that. But when you go into like you bought a coffee mug, handmade coffee mug. And the reality is, do you need eight coffee mugs or should you maybe just pay for two handcrafted ones that you enjoy and are connected to? And so even the cost thing you were talking about earlier, the affordability, that can really it's be affordable. Yeah. If you have less, that can really be so narrowed true. down depend, mm -hmm. depending on the item, you know, obviously handcrafted garbage bags might be a little pricey and just absolutely not necessary. Right. Well, um, especially since it's an plastic is, thought. you know, distributed and bought and, reproduced so quickly yeah. and easily yeah. yeah no that is that's such an interesting thought and what i was going to say um when i interjected but mm -hmm. thank you for finishing um was just how it's blowing my mind to hear you say that because it's making me realize what a disconnect we have 
well, you know what? Not even a disconnect. It's just changing times. And so it's amazing to see this kind of new and modern Western civilization that heavily relies on mass productions of things because we have these warehouses from, you know, when we were doing wars and creating yeah. ammo. And That's true. Uh, gunpowder and all these things so now they're transformed into warehouses thank god like the earth's a safer place cool um but yeah and but then to also know that there's a still huge part of society in the world um in the sense in other countries where they are less manufacturing based and more people based handcrafted based um artisan artisan yeah in america you know you're yeah. constantly on your screen so people don't think to go out their door down the street to a farmer's market and meet yeah. people and talk with well, people in their community and buy fresh and local they think and totally okay too i get it with the nine to five jobs and the time frame and the yeah. stresses of the day and you know finding time to relax for yourself what is convenient are these fast food restaurants warehouse market grocery stores super stores you know all these different things and um it's interesting it's just very interesting not saying that people can't go to those stores they are super convenient i go to them um and use them appropriately but um it's made our lives I, easier yeah we too. could go into the details Having, of how it's manipulated us you know sure, to believe that there's food at the uh our hands our fingertips at, at every hour and we could buy whatever we want in the middle aisles that's usually just has, processed junk you exactly know? that's so. kind of to my point is that it's those those while that idea of big warehouse style distribution uh, under a singular entity so that you can have a wendy's hamburger in chattanooga and it tastes the same and presents the same as the one in salt lake you know it's incredible but that has come at a cost of aspects of our nature that we're no longer necessarily in touch with and yet in an ancestral way like like many other things but we'll just stick to the markets that we're talking about right now i think that's a thing that's tied in that we've lost sight of which is why it comes back in a uh that's why i say in a hipster sort of sort of way because a lot of things are like oh i knitted this you know i i spun the cotton and knitted this sweater myself kind of hipster way they're they're just kind of want to show off that they did something old school and kind of broke free of the mold. Exactly. And, and that's okay because it, it's, we're kind of, it's leading us as long as it's driving from a natural spot, we can, we can get there and we can sort out. We don't have to hate on the people who did it because it was hip. Just like we don't have to hate on the people who just understood it organically and want to participate. We should just be happy that people are doing it again because it gives us a chance to all yeah. get together at a, at a central location with, and, of course, if the market gets, I think it brings a lot of value to it. Like Pendergrass nice. Flea Market is bringing in people from all over, versus the Absolutely. Sonoya Farmers Market is bringing in from a much smaller radius, and that's sure. fine if they grow and bring in people. That's great. We, let's meet the greater community. Well, but that's the great thing about them. It has a smaller population too. You right. Know? I'm sure if right. it was bigger or more populated, it probably would bring. Maybe, in. but it's not as I, like Pendergrass brings in to, almost tourist style. Sure, you're right. Traffic. Yeah, so, people like want and to they're come. they're open well, more often. But those are here. both those are both great. You're still supporting local, basically. It's just mm -hmm. this. It's like the smaller ones are great too because here I can meet my neighbors. Finally, it may uh, for a lot of people who aren't meeting their neighbors these days it's such an easy way to uh, get people out and have them interact with each other while also supporting their community and supporting the people in the community because that's what that's all the vendors that's who everyone is there you know it's incredible it's really an incredible system for for direct yeah. trade you know kind of yeah. removing removing the middleman yeah, I often fantasize about what life would be like if we were less capitalistic and more bartering, trading, offering services for products and, you know, vice versa. Right. Be interesting. What would it be like, do you think? Indulge me. You know, it would probably have its own problems, of course. Sure. I like to think, I suppose naively, that it would be less stressful, more calm, um more family oriented people would be together more um probably more nature oriented because you're outside mm -hmm. tending to your land or your animals um so in a way also more loving because you're having to care for other things and that's a lot of responsibility you know um true um you couldn't 
you couldn't just replace. That's one thing I think about. You couldn't exactly, just replace no. something when it went bad. You'd you have know? to take care of something. If you had a yeah. small motor or even, let's go back, there's not even motors yet. Let's just say there's not motors. If you had a water mill in the creek that stopped turning or paddles broke on it, you can't. You wouldn't be able to just, oh, I'll run to the... You might have a town carpenter at that level, and that goes back to the market idea where you're like, I'll go to the guy who carves wood to get my new wood paddles for, or make them myself or... You got to repair that wheel. There's no going to the box store to replace it. So I just responsibility is a good one that you said. Then there would be more love because people would cherish what they had and their relationships more because they would realize what you know things are. And also, uh, yeah, and also going along with like you wouldn't be able to replace when you transported things. You wouldn't be able to take much with you. So you would mm. really have to decide what was the most purpose you know or most yeah. meaningful for you to take and use that's true. and you know so you i think that's a very important with thing you for your whole life yeah it's interesting to think about um and we wouldn't you know we wouldn't have such we wouldn't have such i don't want to say monolithic what is the word almost hive mind it's kind of monolithic we wouldn't have so much top down connection to the mainstream narratives in in society you would have Meaning local like access you would have local community it? issues i yes. mean you wouldn't maybe care about things because the screen told you to obviously now obviously oh, there was still printing points, they were yeah. still printing newspapers at a certain point in history and but if you go back to oral tradition and what can be shared and how often and like becomes very important to tell the stories and tell the stories how they're told and teach the lessons. You have to be concise. Because your world is going to shrink down so exactly. small you that you'll ha you'll really have to care about your neighbor and your family. You won't be able to worry about someone else's plight or the plight of a whole segment of the population that you determine needs, you know, is being treated inadequately and you want to fight for some cause There'd be a lot less of that. Uh, yeah. Not that that's good or bad. Right. Just you saying know, that's one thing that would change. If it's like, admitted completely, then of course you get a very selfish community. You know, um, activism would be like stop. not as empathetic. We got to stop dipping these witches in the river. This doesn't <laughs> seem right. You know, but you wouldn't necessarily know if that was going. That might just be your town. You wouldn't right. hear about if that that's from happening worldwide. from yeah. four hundred miles away. You might hear about it, but it might be three years later, four years later, and it sounds like a What's story funny to is you. That's what's interesting. We probably have the same problems as we do now, just in a different way. Yeah. Um, the, and it's always would about down, but the, the you have to be positive no matter what as the individual, you know, yeah, and make definitely. smart choices and live, I guess, to your moral compass so that, that you don't get involved in all that. That definitely doesn't change in either but, scenario. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do the right thing. But would I prefer it? Yes. You would. <laughs> Yeah, I, definitely I could see think myself so. really enjoying it because I feel like I would just try to build things. I'd just probably be chopping down trees and trying to put up a shed and a fence and a garden. Yeah, very physical you know, labor. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see myself just fashioning things into different things and hauling water buckets or something. I don't know. Cool. I mean, I'm into that. I like to stay occupied working. You do, you know, with my hands. So mm -hmm. it would be nice for me. There'd always be something to do, but. I also Same. love computers, so I'm happy to be born in this era. I mean, Definitely. look at this. Look how cool this is. Whoa. So cool. Whoa. I know. It's so neat, you know? I'm so nice. neat that we can share and, and do all this. So it's great to live in this time, but let us it's fun to go back and, again, to tie it into the markets. That's kind of what we're doing. That's what going to a market is. It's not like reminiscing, but it's like getting in touch with something farther back in your nature that you're yep. like, man, there's something here. And yeah, of course, it's there's things from the land. Because that's what created the life you have your... today. That's community. a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A part of that was that Absolutely. they were able to trade and those who... How's crazy... How crazy it is... How crazy how's is crazy? it? How's crazy? So, how's crazy? How was doing pretty good. How crazy is it that all our DNA is connected? We are connected it through... It is? Yes. You're sure? There is one strand of DNA or two strands of DNA okay. from the beginning of time. And from that, those cells duplicated and multiplied. Oh. And I mean, that's what I mean by how we're all connected in right. some universal core some way. Some grand incestual scheme. Mm. I mean, <laughs> you far? could view it that way. but Yeah. In a way, I guess. 
That's why we're all the same, as they say. Mm. Anyway. In a way, we are. We okay, are. tell me about cool. baked edges. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Show me some baked edges stuff. <laughs> you got it. Let's talk about business. So today, Okay. thank you for joining us, by the way. You are welcome. Thank you again for having me. This and is really cool. Today, we wanted to talk about just some business stuff. We just wanted to toss awesome. toss the ball back and forth. What are we doing? We're just chit-chatting, really, uh, hanging out. You've been working on a vision board. I have. For the majority of the day. Today has been it's a incredible. very good, productive Sunday. We have it up on the screen. Thank you. Yeah, and you've been working on these podcasts for been the working past on my war several zone weeks. Skills. I have been working on podcasts. Which is really cool. Thank you for listening and if you're out there. I like the mood lighting we're watching. you've got going on Yeah, tonight. we're mixing up the lighting got for this because it's, you know, greens, I'm trying to make blue. it romantic. It's my my mm. wife is co-hosting, so I kind of wanted to mix up the Ooh, lighting. Ooh, got me some wine. Yeah, I got her a little wine, got a little Time lights. Got a li- look at it, I got a little sunset tonight. on the coast over here for her to look at on my screen. It's beautiful, yeah. If only we had a sauna or a jacuzzi. Ooh, yeah. But we have or, enough. We need a no. We'll just do ice baths. We don't need cryo freeze chamber. Oh, yeah, we just need ice them. bath bucket and oh. we need a sauna Ooh. bucket, a sauna hut, like a little. We could even make it like an outhouse that only the two of us can fit in. Mm-hmm. Just make it a little sauna. I'm down. I still like our um, zip lining idea. Yeah. Just build a zip line through our woods. Maybe I should pitch that secret to, sauna. You know the mayor is then wanting you walk back up. The mayor is wanting to you build have a your bike bikes path down there. So maybe I'll pitch to up. him like, hey, how about Adventure Park bike path, okay? <laughs> Tie in a zip line. No. That would be Still, fun. Yeah, because though. I would be jealous. I would want it. But it would be for sick us. to have a zip line. It would I be guess. sick. It would that would be old. and I mean we would enjoy it and then we would actually like, if no it was a, an attraction around here, I bet it would be it would get a lot of hype, you know? Yeah. People would come to it often. Oh yeah. So it's a cool idea. If yeah. we made it well, we need to make it epic for that, though. Right. Yeah, we, it would have to be like people coming to visit. Ten thousand. Yeah. Maybe just the neighborhood kids could zip line. Sure. Well. Sure. So tell me, sure. tell me a little bit about what you're working on here, or however you want to present it. I mean, really, it's your show, so you tell me what My you want show, to do. My show, it's your show. Um, yeah, it's yours. Yeah. Um. I, you know, if we're talking about business, I guess every year since what's been on your mind. Um, Lay it on us. I'm laying. Okay. So every year since 2018 onward, um, which is when Alex and my dad got me um, two KitchenAids. Like they didn't mean to. Uh, It was a coincidence, but also totally okay. Um, But since then, I was like, I have these amazing tools. I really Mm -hmm. want to use them. And I've kind of made it a goal of mine every year to see what I can do and how to improve. And, um, yeah, so now it's 2021 and I'm thinking about like products I want to sell to farmers markets, to local, um, stores and vendors and how I want to connect with my community and things like that. Um, so I really just wanted to, well, one kind of rebrand, um, Mm -hmm. because I do feel like my tastes have become more sophisticated, um, as I've, like transitioned into just who I am as a woman more and the things that I like and what adds value to me and what I think will add values to other um, others. And so I, I just have been doing a lot of like, I love Marie Kondo who talks about the art of tidying up. And once you tidy up all your things and do keep the things that matter most to you and that you use most frequently, um, you gain strong allies with them. And so I've actually made it a goal of mine too, to like utilize the computer more and learn apps and learn different things. And so things that I've learned from Marie Kondo, other organi- organizers I enjoy. And then of course, philosophers like Jordan B. Peterson about keeping your life in order and having a vision. I'm like, whoa, a vision board is so important. How do I create that? And at first I thought, oh, okay, let me try doing a Google Slides, like PowerPoint type format. And it was just shit because, it, you know, they don't have all the beautiful templates and things like that. So I'm like, oh, well, thank God it's 2021 and we live in the age of technology. Let me Google the top best um, vision boards online. And Canva came up. I've done like a vision board slideshow. That yeah. You well, it's, it's everything. They have business cards. They have a website. They have blogs. They have a slideshow. They have everything. It's pretty cool. They oh. have Instagram. Uh, I've used Canva before for my Instagram. Decided to try it out. Boom, bam, bang. 
I kind of have something to show my vendors now. Um, so you got yeah. two KitchenAids. Got two KitchenAids. Use that to start like sure. really baking to the next level. Like show you that, yeah. You liked so using... So here's when I had two KitchenAids. And, right. Um, they were smaller quartz, but still very efficient. I would make batters in one and frostings in the other. But you can see how like shitty uh, my but, dad... My dad's cake. I tried to make like a healthy cake for him, and the frosting look looks drippy. And Down in the bottom right, look at how there's there. just like yeah. nuts everywhere. It does not yeah. look styled well uh, at all. He seems all. to be liking it, but uh, also I don't know. Okay. Look at his face. What does that smile say? Wow, he was slimming down in that picture too. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was actually, and that's him. why I wanted to make like a healthy cake. Right, I remember um, that. But I just that's also when I realized I don't do healthy cakes. I'm not this vegan baker. I'm not. Gluten free, dairy free. Unfortunately, I just sure. really think that fat and whole foods whole makes milk, the best cake. Yes, really makes those are the best ingredients to use. It's in really like just, that. and that's what those are the cakes you want to make. Exactly. That kind of goes back yeah. to so what I was saying was like you got two kitchen aids, mm -hmm. started being able to bake things like this, where now you can actually make a large batch of frosting homemade and a large batch of batter. That taught you sort of the fundamentals of baking, which is obviously important to anything we do learning any new skill you have to learn the fundamentals absolutely and so you got a leg up on that and you're like cool but it didn't necessarily mean that your cakes looked good you hadn't perfected your recipes right. i was like just do the next thing and so this just do it <laughs> so then you've created a vision board that recaps almost shows from like where you started to where you are. So it kind of tells your story exactly. and as a portfolio at yeah, the same time. Yeah, I wanted a timeline so I could mm. see progress. That's and cool. I think when you see progress, that helps you, that helps solidify what you want to see for the present, the now. It helps you determine what's worth. It helps you determine, uh, like, you, like you're saying, solidify. It helps you determine what's worth pursuing and what needs to be let go where you're like okay yeah, exactly. that you have to start with the fundamentals then try some things and say okay that's not my strong suit but wow or that's did, not my style i did yeah. or my style but i did really well at this so let me do one of those again rather than pursue this thing that didn't work out the way i wanted or i didn't even enjoy, enjoy it it may have come out great but you're like i don't ever want to do that again right. it just wasn't an enjoyable thing to do and that so that applies 100%. universally sort of as well. But I love this purple yeah. cake, by the way. I actually like <laughs> that. I you. think it looks sort of cool and whimsical. And I'm sure it's lavender is what's sprinkled on there. Yes, it's yeah. actual dried lavender. And um, that cake, ironically enough, is actually a box cake mix. Um, oh, okay. I did make the buttercream homemade because I was like short and on time. Um, but at the time, that's what worked for me. So any aspiring bakers out there, um, there are that's a little tip and trick you can do if you don't have time to like make a complete cake you can buy a box cake use that uh do i love the ingredients that are in box cakes no mm -hmm. and that's why okay, i'm more no, um, my style now is kind of more eth ethic in the sense of local ethical, ethical thank mm -hmm. you yeah um in the sense of local and organic and whole foods um mm -hmm. but anyway yeah box cake is totally acceptable with if you want to make a homemade buttercream that's special that's cool yeah. Look just, at these emoji cakes too. I mean, thanks for early on. Yeah, it's um, actually pretty good. And who was thanks. the pink one with thirty? That was for actually is that you. Ya is that mm -hmm. for Yakisha? Yeah. Oh, okay. That you helped me get. I thought so. I could. I, for some reason, in my mind, her. So her... Alex, uh, my first cake I ever made professionally and sold. Alex actually got me my client, which hers is pretty was cool. Purple or blue no, for some hers reason. Was pink. That's why I didn't recognize pretty it. Pretty and pink. Yeah. And she turned thirty. I actually yeah, no, was really just, proud of that. Her cake. birthday is near mine. I remembered that from school, and I don't mm -hmm. something about it. And she just asked if you sold cakes, and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> she cool. definitely does. You know, so it was cool that you got to make one. Thanks. And then that's mine in the right hand corner, that's upper right. right. Yep. Yep. And then that one's the awesome. cupcakes are a Memorial Day cupcakes we made when we hosted, um, when we were living in. I like the triple frosting. The I, those actually, I mean, Thank for, you. Yeah, for that being was a cool on the technique. early stuff. Oh, and you should say. It's funny even to, uh, yeah. excuse me, funny to see even in 2018 how what I was practicing was uh, buttercream like colors and swirls and rosettes like piping basically and right. how each year that has changed because i haven't really done a um watercolor palette cake like that in a minute you know so right. but i just wanted to try it at the time and know i could do it yeah <laughs> so yeah and that's what it's all about like you did one early on it was and it, like, okay, that's not necessarily an example that. of why you didn't do another one but no. 
it just didn't mean that that had to become your style. You have to try these things out. Uh, I like the swirl, red, white, and blue. That's really impressive. And uh, what about, so Good Works Baking, that's what you were calling it back in the day. That is what I was right? calling it. That was the that. first name, which is also um, a neat thing to look back on. Uh, before I used to feel like ashamed, like, oh, I'm people are going to think I'm jumping around too much. I went from Good Works Baking to alessandra bakes to now it's baked edges which i love um and i loved each of these names at the time too that's what i have to realize and realize that things evolve and that's cool so started as but good works baking because once again i had this idea to serve my community um how do i serve my community according to like biblical text through good works so that really vibed well with me at the time to be like okay these are I'm baking to do good works, basically. Right. Um, yeah. So, but it has changed. Um, it just, it's changed and it, that's cool to see. Yeah. It just, it just evolved. Yeah, exactly. You still have the same yeah. like sort of core principles, but Definitely. you just, for various different reasons, you've wanted to take things different directions mm -hmm. because it was, you wanted the name to suit who you were, what it is that you did, why you did it. And, and doesn't mean your principles mm -hmm. change. You just just like the baking and the style, everyone evolves their brand as they go along. Thanks, I mean, yeah. you have to grow your brand and you might start with one idea and you're like, you know, that doesn't even, even may even just boil down to the logo doesn't look right, you know, sure. or you don't like your yeah. colors and yeah. you decide these don't represent me. You know? I'm, yep. And if it's going to be repeated and it's going to be out there, then you want to make sure it's something you're comfortable with and something that represents you really well. And, just uh and also isn't it cool aside, if you can be adaptable you know because absolutely then you have more product to sell because you're changing you know or you're keeping up with your passions and you're also keeping up with like maybe what you see serves your community best like so maybe you try to do one thing and then you realize oh well community seems to like this more let me cater to that yeah. for this time or, i don't even yeah. know if there's that much weight in a name regardless oh yeah you not know? not in the name definitely not when you're just forming an idea and putting something together so but I just wanted to point out that that's where... I just mean in change where, in general. And yeah. the name is one way I changed. Right. As well as with different techniques I practiced. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks. Um, I really... I remember when we took that 30th birthday cake for you over to your friend's house. Yeah. And they were doing like a Cinco de Mayo taco or fajita dinner. Right. And... I was feeling really insecure about that cake because the color did not come out how I wanted to. That's actually uh, edited to make it look more red than it was because it was like a pink, like a salmon yuck yeah. pink color. Uh, because at the time I was learning that, oh, well, red, you have to get one, this like super red by Americolor. And I didn't have that. I had like a Wilton red and it was more, it just is more pink. When it goes in the white icing. Exactly. Well, no, in the butter. Out. Not There wasn't a white icing. Butter's like yellow. Oh, you know? it's just butter and, and red? Butter and powdered sugar, yeah. you know, which does have a whiteness yeah, to it. Yeah, it whips into sort of a whitish, yellowish. Yeah. So when you tint but red the white, with that. But the yellow, excuse me, with that red. Yeah. It, turned more pink and then i guess the red what i've learned online is that it develops over time and then it darkens like each mm -hmm. day you have it and i made the buttercream that day i did the cake and the buttercream that day um so anyways i was really insecure about it. i'm like oh this is gonna taste good this is looks like poop i remember it but being, everybody loved it they're like dang you made this, this i remember really the good. cake being really dense it and, was and, super dense but too hard really it was just like your layers were it was really good flavor. Everyone enjoyed yeah, the. They no, all I said agree. they the did, unless they were just too... lying. But everyone said the cake was good. I like a fluffy. I remember light it being cake. dense, but I, I mean, I loved it. It just again, no, that's right. another was, fundamentals definitely. of your Something baking where you've learned, like, oh, okay, if I do this, this, and this, it comes out dense. If I want fluffy, I do this. So it's been fun to you know yeah, eat the another different. Another tip. Oh, go ahead. Who's going to complain about a birthday cake? First of all, right. I didn't make a cake. I just got served one for my birthday, so that's wonderful. So thank you for that. You're um, but strawberry on strawberry, his that, favorite. That being said, as far as you judging it, first of all, we all judge and critique our own stuff. It's also cool that you even have the recollection, number one, um, and number two, like the pictures and the history to look back and see because this can be really inspiring to, it's almost like doing a journal. That is one great thing about having phones. You take pictures of so much stuff that you can go back through and think, 
wow, I can remember, I remember that. Oh yeah, I remember that too. You know, and you've kind of journaled in a way through, through photographs. So it's nice that you've taken so many photos and stuff of your baking. Cause I think we'll see as we go on, like how it has evolved in the different things you tried. And, and of course you were insecure. That was one of the early cakes you made and you wanted it to be received well. And that's, that's completely natural. And it's just uh, a part of development. You know, it's, it's interesting to go through those phases. Of course, you probably still want your cakes to be received well now and, and the things you bake and stuff. But I, w I wouldn't think you would be really nervous at all if someone said, hey, could you make me a six inch or eight inch cake? Right. And now because I'm versed in about how they would receive because like you're said, like, like, now you can know you can make I a used tasty. to not keep butter out to come to room temperature oh, right. even use chilled butter it's like even ingredients how you treat your butter. ingredients yeah, and things exactly. right i mean eggs have to come to room temperature your liquids you really want to come to room temperature yeah i know how yeah. to i know how to make a fluffy I, i'm just confident in like the science and cooking and baking now definitely and you can and you know what else is cool about learning um fundamental like things about doesn't matter like you can be me and put together a motorcycle or you can be you and build an awesome cake what's fun about learning the fundamentals is that you don't have to spend as much time thinking about them anymore and you can spend more time thinking about the creative aspect of wh how you're going to use the ingredients now that you know how they'll be how you're going to use them to do what you envision in your mind's eye and you can focus more of your creative power and your consciousness on like let me develop the end product because the leaving the butter out and getting the liquids right and like that all takes care of itself because yeah, it becomes it's second muscle nature memory yeah. you know absolutely i agree oh, then we, you can there's focus more on good more works elevated baking? things oh yeah this is just more cool stuff, all right i'm gonna take the cams off so you show us you i mean show hey. me a few of these go over a few of these for me um if you so would, this was please. just a whimsical rainbow cake i wanted to make and once again i used a box cake <laughs> here and i actually think i used a box or a tub of frosting as well because i mainly wanted f to focus on like decorating a cake uh, this one right here I made for my dad's office just because I was in a cake making kick and I wanted to practice pink rosettes. Pink and, rosettes on top. Yeah. And it was a hazelnut cake with. And the first whimsical one in case anybody is either not watching or they're just listening. It's just a sort of a naked layer cake pink with jelly beans on the side and like blow pops and rainbow airheads on top and sprinkles and Reese's embedded in it. It's, it's wild. Exactly. I wanted to make like a. Willy Wonka cake um, and try that out. Okay, so um, this one right, right here is actually, I baked it for my friend's husband who is from England reached out to me and asked me to bake his wife um, a birthday cake. Oh, is so that one of her birthday her. cakes? Mm -hmm. This is Kayla's. Oh, it was see, chocolate. This is bringing back memories for me. This is great. Yeah, we met Matthew's I remember family, we drove, mom and dad. Yeah, we that, drove downtown yep, to deliver it. It was so sweet. So can I just say, sure. I think it's amazing that you, I just love, I love the gradient you know the dark pink to light pink to white cool. but then the white dipped strawberries are just so cool like they match the white top I, it's just cool that you went the extra effort you know i'm gonna put dipped strawberries on top of this thing now that's a freaking Thank pro you. style cake and I then appreciate that. you have that same cake is down here in the center picture right yep, from the top down the top cool you put some view. little dollops of pink and white very yeah. nice all right, what are these sprinkles cupcakes on the bottom left? So What's these, the story there? I have a good friend. Um, you can check out her ethically sourced handmade clothing company, Untitled Thoughts, on Instagram, Facebook, and the like. But she was doing an event. What's it called? Untitled Thoughts. Okay. She's a seamstress. Um, she's amazing. And... She does photography as well and oh, modeling yeah. and things like that. But she was doing an event in Atlanta and needed some cupcakes for the event. Asked right. me to make them. And so, voila, I did sprinkled cupcakes, glittery, fun. I believe I did a mix of chocolate and vanilla and then just vanilla uh, American buttercream on top. So, okay. yeah, that was really cool. And actually, there was some promo pictures I got back from that, which were neat to see and yeah. have. Yeah, that was really that fun. That was cool. That was, like a, that was like a gig. You know, you get your little first, Absolutely, one of your yeah. first gigs. Working in the community. Yep. yep. Thanks. Might as well tell us about the last one down there too. I, I can't remember this one either. So the last one is the a ocean cake. water bohemian inspired wedding cake. It was the first wedding cake I did. And it's a small wedding cake because um, the bride who I met actually, um, I don't remember if it was through Instagram. I think 
believe social media for sure, but she did my hair in Atlanta. She was actually an independent hairstylist and I went to her apartment and she would just dye my hair and cut my hair like in her apartment. And it was awesome. And she did a wonderful job, but she saw my baked goods online that I'd been creating things and, you know, baking. She asked me, Hey, you want to do my wedding cake? Like I'm doing a super small outdoor wedding and me and my husband are hipsters basically. Like Mm -hmm. here's what I'm into. So I made that cake for them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It reminds me of the ocean. The blue sprinkles on the bottom look like the ocean, and then the white and blue look like the clouds. It's actually kind of cool. I never looked at it like that before. Well, and that's what I wanted to do because she's a water sign, and she was really big into like astrology and horoscope stuff. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I incorporated that into their wedding cake as she wanted. But that's cool that you get those vibes from it because that's what I was trying to create. Yeah, Um, definitely. Awesome. Very cool. All it needs is some little seagulls. (laughs) Take a little black sprinkles (laughs) and draw your little seagulls in there. Yes. That would be funny. And so this last past year. Vision boarding. Yeah, vision boarding. This is just 2020. Um, Once again, my endeavors evolved and I went from Good Works Baking to Alessandra Bakes. Um, so another name change. I also started streaming on Twitch thanks to this handsome stud right across from me. Live he got streaming. me live streaming. That's right. Mm-hmm. He set me up with a kind of setup like this. Um, but I was just streaming through Twitch and I was playing like Mario Odyssey. Streaming in the kitchen. Yeah, I was doing baked edges like yeah. cooking tutorials and baking tutorials and watching me. Hey, let's just talk while I'm making things in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. And I was also doing stuff like playing Animal Crossing here and there. And I think I still have all of those VODs. Oh, cool. On this, this computer, actually. Awesome. I, I would love to the get the shots taken one. Turn them into YouTubes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is just showing the so, stuff I made in 2020, which was a lot of new things like caramel mousse and, uh, chocolate, you know, n- caramel frosting, chocolate mousse. Uh, I finally made pat and did puff pastries with, you know, the whipped cream center. I did coffee cheesecake brownies from the preppy kitchen, a guy I love. He's an amazing baker. Tried out a shortbread tart with, um a really rich egg and chocolate filling, homemade pretzels for Super Bowl, beer cheese dip, macarons, you know, fun, fun, funny. Are those macarons for Valentine's day? They were. The macarons are killer. Yeah. Those are killer. Once again, I did a strawberry on strawberry cake and then strawberry dipped chocolate macarons. The macarons are killer. Thank you. They're fun to make. They're so easy. Once you finally learn the first time I made them, they were literally rocks you were in vegas you weren't even there i made them like as a way to be busy while you were gone and Uh they were delicious you can eat them all like hard as a rock but they were not uh the correct texture ones you make now are definitely not that they're so chewy with a little crunch collapse shell that just melts in your mouth i just I need macarons That's in my life every so day. Cool. They're so nice. They are. That's really what I want good. for breakfast. I want to just eat four macarons <laughs> and some and a, coffee and an espresso. Dude, that's what I want too. Like tea and a <sighs> treat. That's the life to me. A girl can dream. So let me ask you this about your vision board when sure. you were doing this earlier. What's your? Was this a template that was like? This is all you, right? I mean, the colors and the picture thing was you, but you're the one who decided to say this was. To make it a timeline style. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that this is, you've laid it out. The organization this way. It wasn't, of it was It me. wasn't like suggested like, oh, you should start a timeline and do a vision board. It nope. just gave you a template of slides. Because I just mm-hmm. think that's a really cool way to talk about. So even if, even if you were just sitting down to say, okay, how can I move my business forward today, whatever state it's in. It's interesting mm-hmm. on your vision board, rather than just lay out all future mm-hmm. things to put in like we haven't even gotten to the present or the future yet you've done three pages already three boards already just as a retrospective so you can which i think is really helpful i I think think a lot of people sit down and think to come up with new ideas or new improvements to their current idea or how can we become more efficient or how can we grow how can we scale and that's great you don't need to be a retrospective all the time But I think it's really interesting when you really want to have a, uh, what do they call it? When you want to be thorough and you really want to go 
and find out where you're at. It's nice to lay everything out and say, hey, let's also like take my portfolio from years past. Let me lay, put the pictures of that in my vision board. So even on your vision board, that's a board for the future. You can see the timeline of where you've come from in the past. And that even that might help jog your memory of like, oh, that's right. That's why I decided to start taking it this way. Oh, I shouldn't. I should go get back to focusing more on that. You know, it, it can reveal things to you that only looking towards the future might not have shown you. So I just think it's really cool the way you Thanks. put it together in a retrospective way for oh, the first couple slides. Cool. I appreciate Plus that. Plus it's fun I, for me to remember <laughs> you when you yeah, make some of this stuff. Yeah, it's fun for me too. Yeah. It's definitely, um, even with creating this vision board, not only did I want it to be about discoveries I've made, but it was a discovery for me as well. And when I realized, once again, given kudos to Canva, but how efficient and easy and convenient they made that for me. Um, yeah, it's amazing to see how effective these things are too, because I agree, it's like, even this um, page right here with the colors I chose. Oh, and these are three of my favorite colors, which is cool to see that it was kind of reflected in what I was baking at the time. But that right. kind of like aqua blue, the lavender, and this kind of uh, muted pink, which I yeah. love. Right. But it's more saturated. Everything was more saturated. Everything was more like whimsical, kind of childlike. Um, now I'm, I'm learning how to make that whimsy more adult and like my color mm. preferences are more muted and my fonts are more formal, but still, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. More formal, but just not uptight formal, just more formal. Mm. Cause I'm more classic and, uh, yeah, like it's neat to see how even that's transitioned in such a short period of time to more of an adult professional type feel because. I, that's just where I would like to see my branding go. That's how I want to present myself to others. That's who I am now in this present moment. I right. was this girl at this point. Now I've, I've evolved even this year to that, you know, so. Mm. Um, would you ever go back to streaming? I think I would. Um, would you ever try out some more streaming maybe? I don't know if I would do baking streaming again, right. um, but yeah, I would definitely do like gaming streaming. I think that's a really fun way to stream. You know, sure. one, one, um, and it, it's important that it would be, it's important that it would be fun to you, obviously. And one, it actually works out in your favor if you ever did, but I guess Animal Crossing is a little more popular, but it's nice when you start out making content, if your content is not, well, for live streaming specifically, for live game streaming, even more specifically, uh, Animal Crossing would obviously have a smaller viewership than, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, sure. Call of Duty, these huge games. And so it kind of plays to your favor that you're not lost in, you might be one of 50, one of 25 streamers in a subcategory instead of being one of 400 live streamers in a category. So it's nice if you do enjoy things that aren't so massively mainstream or maybe Definitely. so popularly streamed that you're like, well, no, you know, there's only 25 like, known animal crossing streamers and that so yeah it, because it's I mean, fun to animal grow crossing that way actually that has a community favor. of its own but i agree yeah and right it's, that's cool to see how so someone comes to watch and instead mm -hmm. of you being lost in the sea of streamers it's like maybe you're in there and and well even like with baking was like that it made works you... baking and alessandra bakes you know i think i was more numbers oriented like how do i get more people more followers more likes more yeah. views and now i'm more like I don't care how many people I have mm. following me. This is about my quality and right. uh, my authenticity. And yeah, yeah. I, I think that brings more meaning to me. Like that actually makes me feel more fulfilled, you know, than yeah. if I don't know all these people who are following me and I'm just have all these followers to feel like good egotistically. But it's, yeah. yeah. Um, and I had, that's something I had to admit and like uh, realize, become aware of as well i mean it's a very good perspective cool instead yeah. of instead of being living for the the numbers oh does everybody like what i did it's did you even like it are you getting exactly, fulfillment yeah. out of it like and yeah. switching your am i focus posting to because that. i feel like i have to or because like that brought me joy what i'm sharing and i really right think now. if you're good at something it'll develop organically now there is something to be said for pushing things and mm -hmm. for marketing and branding sure. and sharing and publicizing and all that stuff but uh, none of that's going to work if you didn't enjoy it at your core. 
it's you're just going to be like a salesman as, at a company who doesn't believe in the product you know you're going to go to you're going to go to sell the product and you're not going to be very good at it because you're like i don't care about this what it yeah. does for people whether they buy it or not any, i don't care about any of all it all you care about is how much money right. how many likes how many followers yeah all you care and then like in that my example all you care about is your commission you're like i don't care sir if you need the product or not i'm trying to make a commission on it but when you actually care you want to sell your product to people who actually need it who are qualified for it you want them to get the value out of them buying it and in you focusing on your quality and how that you want to be fulfilled by it i think that will translate and you just came about it naturally i think it'll translate to your customers and not well, you don't have to think of them as customers but people in the community who use you whatever you bake and whatever way you provide it can enjoy it and they'll see the quality in it and they'll see like wow this is really well done it's tasty it's well crafted uh, because you because you wanted to be satisfied and fulfilled by it not because you were like oh i hope this pleases the crowd you know because then the, you leave way more room to be let down by that one negative sure. voice that exactly. you know is always yeah. going to be there in a crowd well, i think it that also came from me just realizing i had to take ownership of things that i'm dealing with personally and if i take the ownership over that then i'm able to take ownership over my business mm. or my yeah. entrepreneurial endeavors or yeah things like that so i agree 100 percent. and this is uh jumping to the end of 2020 or mm -hmm. the middle of, in, of 2020 actually into the end Let's of it but i did obtain my cottage food license so now i have a home-based baking bakery operation um, now you're legit, Bake as they Edges say. Edges 2020. That's what they say. Yeah, and actually, I just got my say, LLC. That's legit. That's legit, baby. And I have a Fane employee number, tax ID, and I file for sales and monthly use tax every, well, monthly, every month. Um, you're a word of the state now. I know. I got I learned the law. I abide by my law. Yeah. And I'm convicted in you that, too. You do have to so obey the laws cool. of the land. Yeah, so. it's good to know. And instead yeah. of being a naive dummy. And like, you know what? You're know. a person who, I like obviously, order. you do like order. And you don't have, I wouldn't say you have dreams of grandeur where you're like, I'm going to oh. blow this bad boy up nationwide. It's going to be the biggest business. But nope. you do, right by setting things in order, by getting your cottage food, you you are just a person who likes to avoid future problems that as you begin to scale rather than because right you could have just started right the you could have just started with baking and then selling and mm -hmm. just started yeah. but all Word it would take would sales. be in your in your mind and i agree with you i feel like all it would take would sick. be one person and suing you and you'd be or, like oh my gosh and they'd be like oh you're not even cottage food licensed like this is all so smart you know to take care of your P's and Q's is what I'll call them. You know, what, sure. what does this, it's like registering your car. Like you can ride dirty with a tag that's not registered to your car and you don't have to pay insurance, but you get caught when there you are get consequences. caught, it's going to be, yeah. you know, and so this isn't that severe. And I don't want to deal with consequences. <laughs> but this wouldn't be that severe, but it's no. still smart because it's just paperwork. It's just a phone call and you're able to get it set up. So I, very cool that you decided to make it legit. Thank and, you. And Once again, just ownership on my part. Um, yeah, take ownership. Said Good I was going to do it. I wanted to do it. Right. Now, I, if my, if what gives me meaning in my life is serving my community or being a part of my community and then cooking and baking and serving my family and my home, well, yeah, how do I do that through my small business? And, uh, well, it's through my community. It's through selling to them. They're going to be my main market for sure. Uh, definitely. So thank you. It was cool. It was definitely like, I feel satisfying to know that I, I have the documents that I do and the certability that I do, you know, the mm. credibility that I do. Credibility, yeah. Yeah. It's really empowering. So you've got your Christmas box. You've got some charcuterie plate you did here. Yep. Halloween charcuterie. Chocolate with raspberry. This is, this was in your chocolate drip phase. Yeah, it is. I did a big here. chocolate drip phase. I love cool. a ganache drip. It looks so clean. It's delicious. The so the you have one here for our listeners, our twelve listeners who don't watch the video. Woo! You have one here that uh, 
It's like a two or three layer big wide chocolate cake with chocolate ganache drip down the sides and then spiral chocolate swirls around the top with raspberries and it looks like something you would see in the display case at the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> like, and that's what it looks like to me. You wow. know, you Thanks. go into a bakery or something, that's and that's awesome. like the big display cake that you're like, ooh, and I give me a slice, a slice of, that. of that chocolate cake too. And yeah. it would be ten dollars yeah, for a yeah, slice. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. That I was love a that fun cake. one to make. That yeah. was a, a tuxedo was that for? cake um, for Melissa's birthday, one of ah. our good friends' birthday party. She, um, her husband reached out to me to make her a cake. Um, so that was really fun. It was Word chocolate cake mouth. laters, laters, chocolate cake layers. Chocolate cake. When laters. someone else is speaking and I'm trying to speak, I I like go deaf and don't speak. That's a thing. No I don't know what it's called. When you said laters, yeah, okay. no, you did. You were saying something. <laughs> but anyway, chocolate cake layers. Um, right. Then there's a white chocolate ganache and frosted with the chocolate frosting, of course. So yeah. Yum. A beautiful cake. Uh, and then the other one is a beautiful naked Christmas layer box. cake I did for, um, a, it was actually a one-year-old smash cake. And the girl who hired me, we went to college together. Um, of course, she did a photo shoot with her niece, which is super cute. And once again, I got the photo. So that's cool because that's a cool way to see my cake and my stuff uh, interacting with other people that yeah. I know, you know? Yeah, because they dressed the it up with a couple flowers. World. And... The word of mouth community is cool. It's really it's a great way I when you're it. small to get some things yeah. for whether it's for revenue or just for mm -hmm. practice or whatever or both mm -hmm. to get your reps in, you know, make it for your friends and family. Great place to start. Yeah. And I'm a person who I need That's, small And they've reached out to you mostly. It's, a, it's great. Yeah, but it's based excellent. off of your. It just feels more intimate. The quality. I love it. They see your quality. They see what you they see. Your pictures look amazing. They see your quality if they've tried it. Or they know someone who's tried it. Everyone has good things to say about it. So, I mean, easy sale, cool. you know. Thanks. Appreciate it. So, I guess I'll just show one last one. Um, I'm going to be working on my website. Is this the end of it? No. It's, oh. it's definitely way it. longer. Oh. oh, okay. If you want to. I just wasn't sure. Okay. Well, um, we'll But this see. is more work that I've done within the middle and end of last year, 2020. Starting to, starting to look like a pro portfolio Dang. to me in, in this yeah. layout. So, I brought... Bot presets Wait, you, oh, so that's I could Nora uniform. And, mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm interrupting no, you. No, go for it. But down in the bottom center, that's Nora and Max's wedding cake. I don't yeah. feel like I've just that's their wedding cake. That picture in amongst all the other pictures, it's really just like looks epic. And for that was some my reason. first like tiered wedding cake. Yeah. You know? Cool. That's really sweet. Thank you. Yeah. It looks great. Because I look at that picture too and I'm like, wow, I actually did a very yeah, good looks job. Yeah, freaking and I was, epic. I was nervous. I was <laughs> That's stressed. a big old three-tiered cool. wedding cake. And I served that bad boy up orange, at the wedding. six inch and eight I really inch. enjoyed you cutting did. it. did. And I made sure. And it sure. was super soft. It was so good. And everybody that was getting a piece, I was like, <sighs> my wife made this cake. the best cake in the world. She makes cakes. You want a cake? You let me know. I was selling I was really slinging wants to cake. get laid tonight, but no, he was. He was slamming. Get cake. laid tonight. Slinging cake. Honey, son on the head tonight is on the highway. It's going my if you way. Go and take I have a no, with I have me. no get idea what song in I'm the back singing. of the limousines. I want to do what I feel this way. Hey, hey must be the money. money. Okay, yeah, I don't so. work for the money. I hate money. So, <laughs> anything else you want to say about these cakes here? Love um, the sprinkle cake. What's the? What's you can this? see my technique is becoming more finessed, and okay. that is yeah. Let's talk more that about means that. The world to me. Let's talk more about. Okay. Let's go a level deeper instead of just saying like, "What do we see on the cakes here?" I need to quit. I'm going to leave it on the screen. I keep changing the camera. Mm -hmm. That's annoying if you happen to be watching the video at that point. Ew. But um, let's talk more about what yeah you see with the cakes here versus earlier, and not just like, "Oh, this one's a better than the other one." Like what you were just saying. How do you? I see intent and knowledge in these cakes, mm. you know, just, hey, okay, this is a <clears throat> person who has experience and knows what she's doing. What's your vision more clear of what your end product that you wanted? Yep. I know mm. like what kind of cake boards to use, how to frost, you know, how much frosting to use when I frost and crumb coat and how to make homemade whipped cream and then spiral it on the top like that or how to make a crumble and a compote and it's yeah it's just more experience and knowledge your pictures are even better thank you yeah, yeah it's even like you learned how to frame because look at the I like bought presets um, i'm shrink the cameras if so you're that watching I could have a uniform look for all my pictures right and so. this has like i can tell that the chocolate cake in the top right is so bigger in layers than the uh 
sprinkle cake in the top left. I can tell it's a wider cake, okay. a bigger pan, mm -hmm. but, uh, because you framed it the same. It's almost like I can see the scale of the cakes because your frame is the same. So I know, oh, that's a smaller one. That's a bigger one. It shows me cool. more because pictures can be deceptive, you know, from certain sure. angles. If I change the angles, I could make that chocolate cake look small compared to the sprinkle cake. So by framing it, you've been able to show like your... A diversity like your what do they call it your ability to uh yeah i guess diversity your ability to sort of versatility do, yeah. versatility that's mm -hmm. the exact word to do different styles and different ways um very nice very very beautiful cakes here and you i mean really it's impressive this is even this is the first time i've seen all this so i'm just looking at it and like giving my thoughts um on as they come to me i remember eating that is that the cheesecake or what is that in the center with the crumble that is the cheesecake. It's really a good cheesecake. You did a thick compote. Is it compote? Mm -hmm. Compote, yeah. Compote layer on top. Peach, From, I believe. Um, farmer's Market yeah, Peaches. You, you homegrown used, farm. Right. I mean, in our neighborhood, it's called Penelope Peaches, FYI. Yeah. Farmer's Market, shout out. They're really awesome. Good. So good. I've discovered that peaches are my favorite fruit. 100%. Really? They are so juicy and soft and flavorful i know you hate peaches he like named his dog peaches and he hates peaches so that i could learn to love them okay well that's it was sweet. to work on myself <laughs> oh he says now on his yep. podcast retrospective <laughs> okay there you go that's what that's i realized true. about why yeah. i did it in hindsight I just didn't your know subconscious it at the time. was yeah, you just don't always know it at the well, time that's good intent well, good on you I did. By somewhere deep in my soul, had good intent when I did that. <laughs> no, when I named her realistically, though, that was a part of it. But also, uh, that name just came to me in the blink of an eye. And I was like, that's what your name will be. And so I just stuck that's with sweet. it. Well, and you loved that cheesecake. So you must like peaches some. It was. I mean, the cheesecake, your cheesecakes are amazing. I've said that a thousand times. I wish you'd make more of them. And I kind of don't because I don't, don't want to stay good on my, on my diet that I eat, that we eat. So. Are we going uh, deeper? Oh, sure, we can. I'd love uh, to. If you want to, this is once again just kind I recognize of more the chocolate cake. This is inspired by Christina Tossi of Milk Bar. You know, yes. Momofuku, she started working for them. Then tell she... us this. Oh, go for it. I was going to say, tell us the full story of that cake. So you were, tell her history, <gasps> but then tell how the journey of you making that cake went for you. Sure. Because that was an interesting okay. one. I remember that. That's a great question to ask her. You ran into a lot of you ran into a lot of stuff in that cake. I did. There's yeah. many components in that cake, and that's something that I love about Christina Tossi. And I'm I'm not going to do a whole thing on her because that this podcast isn't about her. But I do. I am very inspired by her, um, and her journey and how she just likes to create baked goods that feel like you're buying from a bake sale. So she's all about like. Can you make it from your pantry? Is it full of butter? Just really unique and creative as well. She's all about layers. Um, so this is a corn sheet cake, um, layer cake with a sour cream frosting and blueberry compote or a blueberry jam actually. And then with... Making my heart rate go up. Mm, it was that, so good. When you said sour cream frosting and the blueberry, I was like, that's right. That And it was so rich. And all the flavors. It had so many distinct flavors. Yeah. I mean, with the buttery, gooey um, corn sheet cake, which I used like corn powder, and then the light sour cream frosting, the jammy tart berry filling, and then the crunchy crumbles on top. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah so I made that cake. I was going to use it as my like 29th birthday cake. You were I so that, psyched I was. for it to be your birthday cake. But then I also couldn't resist trying it. Right. So my uh, instant gratification, I gave into that. And I was, I mean, I didn't complain. It was really good. This is Spain where Alex and I actually went on our honeymoon. I would, let me turn the tables and ask you a question, Mr. Host. But sure. what, two things, two questions. What was your favorite meal or treat tried in Spain on our honeymoon? And uh, what was your favorite cultural experience traveling mm. internationally for the first time? Sure. First timer right here, guys. Um, one of my favorite treats. When you say treats, you mean treats? Treats? Baked good or savory. They have a I, lot of savory sandwiches. and stuff. So I have a hard time recollecting a lot of things. So... Let me just 
go to what immediately what comes to mind. One of my favorite things that we tried as far as food went, uh, definitely in the top was the coffee shop in, was that in Sevilla? With the comic book store coffee Sierra shop? Sierra La Pop, which is that picture. And um, what was it called? Sierra La Pop. Okay, and we just found that on maps to get coffee, and it was like an actual it kind of like well iconic, reviewed. yep, awesome little spot. It was completely really dead. well known. The yeah, to nobody was there, which was awesome. But their little coffee drinks, which you got an amazing picture of right here in the top right. Um, that I mean, it was just killer. It was it was like so good. We ordered, you know, we or ordered tri color. We ordered second second drink. Um, and had more espresso drinks. Um, I loved right down here in the bottom right. I mean, this is right up my alley. A couple coffees and a chocolate donut. I mean, <laughs> things like that. I, I, it's nostalgic. I, I just loved overall about Spain that I could get a scrumpet on any <laughs> corner of town anywhere I went. Like, it didn't matter if I was getting off the train, getting onto the train, going to look at some store or some shop or some museum or some park or or some cathedral there was scrumpets all the way down like everywhere you went you could stop in and get a little coffee get a little bite get a little like iberico ham on bread for, for yeah. one one in uh, 180 euros you know like Which for two like euros what, three bucks in for, USD. no less i think oh, okay. i think actually the euro was we were getting more for our money with the euros. Oh, for sure. Than what we it were. would have cost us to do this. Oh, oh. We, it, no, I think the American it was dollar almost was an a equivalent. little higher, but. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm, okay. A little bit. Well, they're still selling stuff dirt cheap. Sure. Where things were like two bucks for something that you'd easily pay four dollars for here in America. Yes. Um, or six. Yeah. So I loved that. And what was your other question? So that my favorite treats was really more. It wasn't the treat themselves. It was the availability. Okay. Of the treats. Fair. Uh, some of my favorite food was definitely the little tapas joint on the corner. Uh, the cellar. What is that what it was called? The yeah. cellars. It actually was like one of the top spots in Barcelona for tapas. It's super small. And known for it was right part of Barcelona's door. slow food guide. So they're yeah. very like they don't they're cook known. for the masses. Yeah. yeah. They're and, booked for months. And right next door to where we stayed, just by happenstance, it was like right a block down. We so ate there twice. The guy gave us a limoncello shot for free just because he knew we were, we were on our honeymoon and we were tourists and we came in a second time and he recognized us. And they probably had some of the best food mm -hmm. that we that we ate. And we ate tons of in good Barcelona, food. Barcelona, yeah. Yeah. And so those were the two culinary things that stand out to me. The availability oh. of all just pastries and coffee was just everywhere. You know what my app, one of my absolute, you'll know this when I say it. You know what one of my absolute favorite things was, was the almond, almond queso crepe, the ham and cheese. Oh, crepe. yeah. They make you a little that. sweet crepe. And he's like, you want to throw a ham and cheese, fold it into a triangle. Give me a little espresso or, or, or latte on the good. side. And it just there was something. It was basically just a ham sandwich. It wasn't even special, but something about it being hot in the crepe just made it. No, made for it sure, nice, and that you know? cheese, yeah, that like fresh. I just loved. Cheese. I loved eating that way. I loved just popping in. Everything was low key because there's so many shops that none of them are packed. Mm -hmm. You just pop in, and the one guy's like, "Yeah, sure, sit over there," and he just has a little one burner crepe maker thing over here, and it's just all so one crammed together. Machine. But yeah, you just yeah. like they get it done. It was just it was nice, feet. yeah, and so. It was. That was some of my favorite culinary uh, experiences, okay. a few of them at least. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's those were basically my questions and just anything like super memorable from traveling internationally for your first time. Um, what would you say? It's what would you anything say? memorable in general from traveling internationally. Obviously, the flight was super memorable. Never okay. been on a plane that long. We also got super nice yeah, Delta One cool. accommodations. So we were laid out in like full... 180 degree lay flat seats and entertainment and they served a dinner and they served a like a whatever they called it before you land and so that was a big part of it going and coming very comfortable way to fly I mean the time really flew by on the planes and they were such smooth flights um, as far as getting to Spain it was in a weird way less of a culture shock than I was expecting um, 
it felt like, I guess because it's modern civilization, it didn't feel, you didn't feel out of place in the way of that, how do they operate here? It's pretty easy to understand. They, the stores are open, their schools, it's just like how we live here, but it's just very different geography, it's very different architecture. Um, obviously, we schedules. live now more suburban, but we I've lived in an urban environment before, and it was like m- more condensed urban, and you use the train, and that was a big uh, thing for me, was like, wow, they just you can hop on the train and go all over town. The town was huge. I've never seen... You know, the buildings aren't more than like eight stories tall, but they go on as far as the eye can see in varying heights. And that kind of blew my mind how sprawling of an expanse it was. You saw no big cars. You only saw little compacts and motorcycles and scooters. Uh, The trains ran on time and were super convenient all over town. So the culture, the culture was there, was definitely different, was interesting. And yet it, at the same time was like easy to adjust to, I guess I could say you didn't feel it's like goes back to what you're saying about DNA. Like we're all humans and we all need to eat. We need these services, whatever. So in that respect, it felt the same, but it was so interesting to see how, wow, they just, if you live in Barcelona, it's like you live in an apartment, you use the train to get everywhere. Uh, life seemed really laid back because everybody kind of had their shop and they're like, I'm at my shop. Like when you went to the shop, it was the same guy as it was yesterday as the day before as the day before. It yeah. was like two people ran the shop. You know, it was either years, one or the other. You know? And yeah. it's the shop, it's the family shop and they have their people. So it was, and of course, the other thing about traveling internationally to Europe and which has a much older established architecture from what we know um, even though maybe there's some old stuff in America we don't know about in history, okay, if we really want to go there, but that's not for this podcast. Like a conspiracy theory. And like a little conspiracy fact. Um, not even a conspiracy theory, but um, the you know the architecture and the old styling of things was very cool to see too. To look at a building and be like, they built this hundreds. They started this in 1300. This Look was at here. That quality. Yeah, and like, how did they lay here. this stone, and how they move? It? And of course, the my absolute standout. You got to go to Barcelona. Obviously, if you go there, you got to go to the Sagrada Familia. I mean, that's like the thing about Barcelona, and that was amazing to go to that to go up the tower. You and I, I like that we didn't really. We picked and chose our experiences, but we didn't try to skimp. We were like, oh, we're not going to pay for the part of the tour that takes you up the tower. That's like one of the best parts is to go yeah. up in one of the yeah. towers of the basilica. Do it. You go up high, you see the city. That was cool. I, I you mean, just go down the tiny spiral staircase. Amazing architecture, huge. And you feel it when you're in there. You feel the, you feel the reverence to the sort of spiritual side of things, but you also feel 100. the what went into it to produce it. You just can't imagine the scale of it that you're like, I mean, what a project to take on. And that they've changed sculptors like four times now because they just get old and die. That's how long of a project is. The same guy can't sculpt all everything. It'll never, it's not possible. So it's a, an amazing, it's kind of like your vision board. You can see the retrospective. Like you can see on this side where they started and then they changed it to this sculpture. And then here's the most recent side that they've been sculpting and building the towers. And it's just... It's incredible, and we don't have anything really like that in America, so it's beautiful to go over and see those types of landmarks and those sort of cultural, architectural phenomena, you know, that they invest in, and it's not like everyone in Barcelona is invested in it, but they certainly seem to take pride in it because they're proud of what someone in their community stood up and said, I want to organize this, and this is my vision, this is what I want to do for everybody and how I want it to be and what sort of the greater good it's not like he built a big walmart for himself he built a cathedral to god you know so yeah they built i mean the whole very um, cool thing to see incredible guyel yeah cool i'm really glad to hear that from you because travel to me is just such a eye-opening and beneficial experience to humans and individuals because you are getting a view for how other people live like and you're getting it firsthand by living in that country yourself but uh, Park Guyel, you know, that was Gaudi 
basically drawing up a huge blueprint of acres and saying how each part of land was going to be utilized you know mm -hmm. and so that's just such a cool that basically was his vision board you know for right. that so, during the time but so um it's incredible to see it come to fru fruition in a country and it's interesting to talk about those two things because what's i feel like what that sort of shows us is that that's what it takes is an individual with a vision to create for most of the, re uh, you know, I think Steve Jobs was the one who said, like, most of everything you see in front of you and interact with in your daily life was created by someone. Like, someone had the idea for that and decided to figure out how to make it and bring it to market. And so his pitch was kind of that you should have that perspective when you look at things and not doubt yourself about what maybe you can create and what you can produce because everything around you was produced by another person just like you. So if they yeah. could think of the idea for that, then whatever you think of the idea for can be something of value that might be worth pursuing. And if we all didn't pursue those things as individuals, what we love and, and what we cherish and feel what feels meaningful to us, we wouldn't have awesome things like the Sagrada Familia, like Park Guyel, like, uh, you know, the things we have in America that have been designed by architects and our landmarks and our monuments, you know, and of course they take a team and you have to hire people to, you know, carve and build and move the freight. A but again, without, without a vision, uh, even like about your cakes we were talking about earlier, you know, you envision, you started to really envision the final product and understood the fundamentals that you needed to apply to achieve it. And without being able to envision the end goal, you have almost, you have nothing. You're working blind, you know? So um, it's just a very in interesting principle to keep in mind. And it works for us in all aspects of life. On the grand, you know, it builds the Sagrada Familia, but it also makes a three-layer cake. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. principle that it yeah. can be applied universally like that. Definitely. So what is what else is this you're showing here? Just some pictures this, of... Uh, yeah, this is more of my inspirations for, like, what I want to involve Florals, into. Florals, tea, hosting, community, those charcuterie, are, yep. events, local markets. I that sounds like you. all those things. And you can see examples of them through my pictures. Mm -hmm. But um, that's cool what you're saying because it's true. Like, even with this vision board, it's funny how this came about because I was thinking, like, oh, how can I do my website? How can I redo my Instagram and my Facebook? And it's like, well, how can I do something for me to feel confident in going and just speaking directly with the people I need to speak with instead of, like, marketing to the massive that don't – I mean, they – they do supportively and like viewership, like audience wise, they help me get somewhere. But as far as investment wise, they don't really get me anywhere. But if I can look at this and say, wow, this makes me feel super confident. And this makes me feel super confident to share with another person to get uh, their confidence from, you yeah. know? So I think that's a very, such a cool tool to use that people often forget if they are only using TikTok or Instagram or yeah. these platforms where you're only sharing a photo and like a quote or, you know, a five second, 30 second, one minute video. That's it. And said, so yeah. this is showing you years of things that I've done or like for myself, it's showing me years of the things that I've done to yeah, I can go and talk to that person yeah. or this person about starting up my small business and being like, I'm legit, you know? Um, so and I think this also helps me be more productive than just my social media platform because sometimes with the social media, we get too involved with the posting rather than the uh, hindsight, the perspective, I guess, the action part of things, you know, because uh, the action is in promotion. So you're constantly having to promote yourself to market. But with things like right. this, you're promoting action within yourself. Um, so yeah. for me, that's very beneficial right now because I think I have a tendency to post more than like go and do well, by posting more, I just have less time for the other things that I think are more are going to be more productive towards like my production in the yeah. future. So, so this, so here's how I see it, and and you touched on it. I mean, you really basically made my point um, as you went through what you were saying there. 
And what I wanted to touch on was that obviously, you know, this and Instagram are two very different things. Like you've created a vision board, number one, for you to do a retrospective and have a point of view on where you were and where you've come to and then to analyze based on what you've learned and what you've what you've produced what you might want to do moving forward by and also taking an outside inspiration and so this is more of a this is more building ideas and that this can be good because i think they're both good but obviously if you're only ever on instagram trying to think of the next thing to post the next whatever that's going to get you likes that's going to get you followers but that also fits your image whatever sometimes you can get lost in the sauce as they say and get hung up on well what's my branding and how do i produce more 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 followers more likes more i need to grow 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 but more number oriented. so and so realistically instagram is like when you're ready to market when you're ready to get your name out there it's kind of like i think of this podcast in a way i was telling phil um i think on the last podcast when someone finds the podcast and may or maybe even finds my YouTube channel in general, maybe there's other content on there outside of the podcast that I work on that they appreciate more. But when someone finds it, I want I don't mind that the repertoire is there. I want my portfolio displayed there, whether they found it at episode eight or they found it at episode 88, you For know, sure. or episode yeah. 102. It doesn't like. You want it's them cool to find them it to when they find it. What you've been doing, your archives, yeah, or whatever. and it doesn't yeah. matter where they pick up at. It's that doing makes you it, more credible as well. Doing it is about your self development and yes. building it for yourself. Just like you doing this vision board is not wasn't you know you didn't do it to come on and share, even though we're sort of using it as a jump off point for what we're talking about. But well, that yeah, two birds could be killed with one stone. Although, don't kill birds, but <laughs> don't kill any. No birds were harmed in don't the making of this anything. podcast either. <laughs> no, they um, uh, ex- well, they were Well, they were fed homemade from, bread, from one stone. I but so, you know, it's two different things. When you want to market, then you want to go to Instagram and you want to scream from the mountaintop. But when you're ready to really sit down and figure out who am I about and where am I taking my ideas going forward, and you don't want to just get caught up in the the spinning wheel of Instagram and just like, how can I make more content when you want to make content with value? You need to stop sometimes and lay out where you've been, what your inspirations are and what direction you're actually going. So of course it's great to do both and it doesn't, and maybe one day you can do both and you make that a part of your vision board, how I'm going to incorporate social media and use it. But it's just, I just think it's a great tool for developing your ideas, fleshing it out and, and going back and touching base with, hey, why am I doing this again? You know, when and, and also just the fact that you've gone and grabbed all of these pictures and put all this together, I'm sure was fun for you. It's almost like going through an old yearbook where you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. You know, you kind yeah, of the history use, comes running you know, back. That and then, makes me feel good because it's like course you th- feel these good. pictures serve a purpose. The fact too. that They're all this even exists. They're not sitting on my album, you know. They're being used productively the fact that this exists should make you feel good because it's like wow look at all the things i have baked and i have sold and i have produced you know and and and, and that's that's kind of the point i was making about the podcast it's not about how good was that one podcast and like how how or how good was my video that i made how good was my cake it's like just be happy that you started it you finished it progress how's my journey yeah Yeah, those are the real I agree. Exactly. So in it, what else? Anything else you want to show us here on the vision board that's important? If you guys want to know some of my goals, I want to know kind of wrapping up. But uh, I would I need to launch my website. I invested in that last year and didn't um, bring it to fruition. Fru- fruition. You got it. Fruition. You OK, it. sorry. Um, didn't bring it to fruition as I had like wanted to i guess i will say but um i'm kind of glad i did it now because i'm learning that other resources might be better suited to what i'm looking for in developing a website and blog and things like that i definitely want to develop a relationship with vendors in my community 100 uh, percent mm-hmm. so that i can give them products such as a curated loose leaf tea box I want it sourced from local vendors and then I want to include my baked edges like tea time inspired cookies or cookie mixes uh, um, in order to do that and to hopefully get people on board with that. I plan to 
bake all the treats that I intend to serve in those boxes and give uh, samples to respective vendors as well as host tea services to local family and friends because I am I think it would be so cool to do a tea time pop-up where um, I connect with my uh, local coffee shop that has a big vendor warehouse and they'll let me come in and you know, we'll sell tickets to 20 to 30 people and then I'll make a spread of um, foods and bite-sized uh, desserts and then, of course, bring in some local loof leaf teas and serve them for tea time because I know that I've really enjoyed yeah. trying the different tea, time, tea times. The tea pop-ups is like my stuff. favorite. That's my favorite tea idea. Tea time is just such a... I think it's so awesome. You know, I realized that. Why? Why do I want to do this? Why do I care about tea time so much or this yeah. and that? And it's like, it's not about the tea time. Uh, the fact that I've had such wonderful experiences with tea time, that's part of it. But what yeah. it's truly about is quality time. Right. That's my love language. And that's what I want to share with other people is nice quality because the time. food at a tea service, and I think that's what you do when you have high tea or you yeah, just sit and have exactly. a meal with others. You have, first of all, you have hot liquid, which is always nice and mm -hmm. relaxing Good to drink. So you have a nice hot system. tea. And then the food does not, as they say, insist upon itself. You're not there for the big grand gesture of like, yeah, what's the entree and what's feast. the dessert. The food is very but. small. It's very dainty. It's very delicious. Very filling. And decadent. Yeah, lots of and food. they bring it out and you have a couple bites and you, you can, can pace yourself or you can have it. And then you sit and you chat and you wait maybe five, ten minutes for the next portion of service. Or again, even if they bring you the whole, if it's a tea where they, because every tea time is different, you know, it's just the idea of tea and scrumpets, but I like to call them scrumpets. Um, <laughs> sometimes they bring you the whole tray and you leave that and you eat it at your own pace. And it is, it's a really nice way to just sip some hot liquid, have little finger foods and sit there with a small group or a large group of people and enjoy it without the clatter of silverware and um, server serving and refilling of drinks and all this stuff. It's like a lot more low key and relaxed. And again, the food isn't, while the food is a very nice display and is great, it's gone in a bite or two. So you're not just sitting there shoveling pasta in your face or grabbing another slice of pizza or cutting a steak. It's one or two bites, a sip of tea, and then it's a conversation, you know, and that's, exactly, that's yeah. what's a lot of fun about, um, about, tea time and tea service um in my experience that's what i've really enjoyed about it as well cool. i think it's and a great think idea for me it's about like yeah once again that's another way to bring europe to this to the united states at least and the yeah. fact that like uh often in american culture you know restaurants are all about turning tables and how quickly yeah. can you get one guest out and the next guest in and you know get your tips and whatever but in europe it's very much about like People come in, they get served, they're left alone the entire meal. And mm -hmm. like you said, they're there to sit, relax, communicate, converse. And uh, to me, that's something very beautiful. And just allowing a person to like relax and lounge and not feel rushed and to spend time with the people they love. Definitely. So yeah, those are some of my goals. And that, that definitely is like I've uh, – with discovering ownership, with the discoveries of things from my – baking past um with the visions of things i want to do it's kind of like christmas carol it's really funny but when we look at the past when we think about our present or when we focus on our present and then we not fear our future but plan for the future in a sensible way it really makes us our most optimal best selves you mm -hmm. know um I, at least for myself i definitely feel that way i think it makes me the most convicted and it helps me be the most redemptive as well if i'm doing something wrong i'm able to change accordingly um but yeah just a really cool way to see what you want to do so my whole uh thing i love minimalism i'm very simple uh i like rustic things such as like the cardboard packaging wood accents and florals greenery so this is kind of my product packaging vision the last thing i wanted to end on for now um mm -hmm. i definitely still want to do like a menu a, a potential tea time menu and then what would go in those treat boxes um, and those specifics will come but right now i have an image from this top right image here is from Cupcake Gemma. She's wonderful. She's English-based. So she's selling the individual components 
She sells the you sprinkles, the, the you dye. You make them yourself. She gives you the recipe. Yep. And she has the chocolate chips, the mix, the whatever. And then you make those awesome birthday cake cookies. Stir it up and bake it. Yep. And, and I'm all about that. I think that's cool. definitely what I want to do with my products is like, I want to provide that quality time for you. I'll give you the ingredients. You make it at home for yourself. Um, unless we're doing like a tea service. And then, of course, I just like this packaging down here. Um, and I do like the idea of maybe one day partnering with a local potter um, in my community to also put that in my tea boxes, like maybe a small cup or something Ooh, yeah, to include with the tea and the treat or, you know, or maybe I could do a box that Very does cool. has the cup and the diffuser so you can steep your tea and then the tea. So we'll see. But yeah, that concludes my board um, for now, but that's my basis. That's what I've started. And I think this is the direction I definitely want to go. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and it's good to finally, hey, I took a day to do it, but right. I've gained all this confidence and that's sure. really priceless um, to feel that and to know that. The hours you invested today building this is nothing compared to the hours you've already invested just part learning of them. the fundamentals yeah. and baking and producing. So that's just a you know cost of doing business and it seems like you enjoyed putting it together. And it also gave you great perspective and great direction. And I think it, I think it's a great thing you've done. And I, I enjoyed you. seeing all your old cakes that you made and just remembering all the memories and a lot of nice stuff. I mean, you've made a lot of freaking cakes and I think people know you for your baking really more than uh, a lot of people say they bake, you know, and oh, I want to bake. I love to bake. But you truly have, you don't do like you took it outside of the realm of like, I like to put things in the oven and put icing on top of them. You know, sure. you really wanted to create difference and you can just see in the diversity of your styles, you wanted to try different things, different flavors and create and really use baking in more of a creative way. That's pleasing, not just a way that's like mm, brownies, you know, you really wanted <laughs> to sure. make something yeah. where it's a presentation where somebody's like, wow, this look at this beautiful, unique one off thing just for me. Because that's what baking is about. Like when we eat a sweet treat, we're having a treat. It's because there's something good or something has happened in our life. There's some idea we want to associate with a slice of cake or a cupcakes or a pie, you know. Yeah, uh, I almost want my treats to be like when people eat them, they forget that we have these huge stores where they could get it at whatever time they want. They get right. it and it's like this decadent sacred very special thing and there's you know? not another yeah. one like it exactly yeah it literally and it's represents handmade. so if it's their mm -hmm. it if it's their birthday if it's their wedding there's no other you know the cake is a, a birthday cake everyone expects a cake on their birthday and to have one that's like no one else will ever have this cake in this way with the icing spread, with these colors, with the with flavors the that I prefer. No, you can copy yeah. it and you can mimic it, but it's it's a one off creation from from someone well, else. You yeah, know? And, and so like what it shows you the uniqueness, mm -hmm. and you can find more joy and kind of going back to what we were saying about retailers versus smaller markets. There's more. There's just more meaning in it. There's more meaning in eating a homemade six inch cake than there is than going to Publix, which I love Publix, but Me too. just buying a sheet Epic. cake with okay, big letter you. ice, happy birthday written on the top sheet, vanilla sheet cake with vanilla icing. Yeah. Or like you were saying earlier, you know, to tie back in with that, really there are, let's say seven recipes. Like there are only seven plot lines in literature or like in writing, you know, um, what makes things unique is each person, that's why I love the uh, use of a vision board. It's like, what is each person's experiences? What purpose are they trying to provide because of right. what they've been through in their life? And that's what makes something a brand, a product, whatever, truly special. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of because really everything, if you think about it, is generic, you know, um, yeah wrong word to use. I don't love to use that word, but technically everything is. And what makes it unique, what makes it special is each individual's, how in each individual chooses to spin it, you know? Each individual's journey. 
absolutely that led them to yeah that creation that you're because a lot of people often want to get down like oh you know everybody's doing a tea box everybody's making cookies everybody's making a website everybody's making t-shirts or music or this and that it's like yeah everybody is because we live in a very populated world right however that doesn't mean you can't uh be successful you know right. so it's like but what makes you successful is not you copying other people what makes you successful is owning who you are what you love what's your passion and how you want to serve others and uh that's been my favorite thing understanding and coming to terms with mm. recently well that's very beautiful Thanks. and very good advice well i'm very inspired in by you podcast good land job. and youtube land should listen up because Thanks. it's very been very good to see your journey and i've enjoyed it and you're beautiful you're a beautiful soul and i love Thanks. you i and love you and glad, you're so very entrepreneurial too so glad my i got to eat pioneer. all your delicious cakes and uh i just like to tell all the people out there if we, i just got a shill for my shill coin like i said on my last podcast uh shill coins going up in shares i'm getting paid shill coin to tell you i need you to like subscribe comment I think Phil says turn on notifications. I don't really care, but I would love for people to comment when they listen. At least say, hey, I listened. Or pick out one thing and let's start an argument or something. Let's get something going here. Well, you know? Hey, I want to see more baked veggies. But edges. if you happen to click on the video, and I should put this at the beginning too, but just hit like and subscribe so that I can get in on the a algorithmic action, however that works, you know? Or don't. Like Honestly, I have to say that every time. Or don't. I mean, whatever. Thanks for listening. Thanks no, for watching. You, should. you definitely should. And this I is love great you. Great content. This is great content. And I this love was a you. lot of fun. And we will see everybody else on the next one. Episode six in the books. Woo! Peace out. Thanks for having me. Don't forget what this you're is about. Awesome. So long. <laughs>